What's up guys, it's Burning Rubber here. Today we'll be doing a review of a 2015 Golf R. I have the owner here, Vlad, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about this car. So tell me, like, where did you get it? What's the process and a bit about, about the car itself? So I've been looking for a Golf R for like one month, two months, so a year and a half. It's been a while. And uh, I got it, I was looking on eBay actually, and I liked the color. I wanted a Mark 7. And I got his phone number, started texting him, and about a month and a half later, flew to New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey has about a day drive. And drove it back, zero issues. And yeah, that's how I got the Golf R. So if you mind me asking, how much did you pay for it and what was the damage? I paid uh, two zero 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 thousand, <laughs> twenty thousand. And the damage, well, you're probably thinking, man, it's a good deal. Well, it has been in a front end accident and a rear accident. Still clean title though. Um, so the body lines look pretty good. I mean, look at the rear bumper, it looks to be repainted. Um, other than that, Pretty good condition. The owner took good care of it. Okay. So I pulled the trigger. Yeah. Tell me about the the engine itself, like some of the details. All right. So this is a uh, 2.0 TFSI port injection. Um, it's got a pretty big turbo on it. I think it's called an IS38. And stock, it makes 292 horsepower. Currently, I have a Stage One high torque file from APR. At sea level, the torque should be around 360 horsepower, Good. 350 to the crank. So it's definitely a different beast right now, too. Yeah, um, let's do like a quick walk around and just sort of give us the plans uh, that you want to do, like any additional modifications. I know that you, you did a, you've done a stage one tune. We've lowered it a few weeks ago. Uh, what's up? Like, what else are we going to do on this thing? Well, if I want more turbo, turbo noises, I need an intake. I'm thinking of an open intake so you can hear the sound and the turbo. Um, next thing, I mean, these wheels are bent, probably from potholes. And they're, they look decent, but they're not great. I mean, I'd like to get new wheels. What's their size? These are 19 stock. Okay, pretty nice. Uh, I'd probably also change these taillights. I like the uh, Mark 7 like LED strip right here. They just look really nice. I can't. They're, I think they're called Euro Spec. Um, next thing, I really want to get a diffuser. And there's three prongs right here, and then things right here, things right here. I think it looks. It's gonna look aggressive. I've considered lacking this sound, but we'll see. Maybe it hides the prone. Also, a bigger. Uh, Head scoop, hood latch, or whatever. Maybe a longer one because it's a bit more aggressive style. That should uh, sum up the body. Sweet. Would you consider like a black vinyl roof, or are you, are you happy with the blue color? Dude, you can't go wrong with blue. Yeah. Like that is. Yeah. Sweet. Well, now let's go inside the interior of the car and, and talk about some of the features and just the, the ergonomics of, of the cabin itself. Uh, the steering wheel, it's got this flat thing on the bottom. It's like super comfortable. I like really like the design of it. The stitching is silver um, along with the, uh, with the seats and whatnot. It'd be kind of cool if it was blue to match the exterior, but it, it, you get what you get. There are some blue LEDs now. If it was darker, we would be able to see like the interior has some, yeah, some strips so this of right blue. Here, it is currently lit up, lit up blue, this strip right here. Just to complement the exterior. Dark. This lights up blue. Uh, my needles are blue. My eyes are not blue. Overall, what's your like favorite feature of the interior? Favorite feature is the steering wheel. Steering wheel. I love the steering wheel. Does it like it just handle pretty good? Handling, feels, yeah, feels good. I just like, yeah, just the steering wheel. I just started. Biggest problem with this thing is it's kind of slow. I don't know if I need to update it or the 15s just kind of have a slow system. But if I flip through these, you'll kind of see um, what I mean, for example, if I click on setup, 
just look how laggy that is, you know what I'm saying? For a 2015, I shouldn't be doing that. It's like, wow. Oh, that's super slow. It's, <laughs> I know, it's pretty annoying. I don't really use this system. I mean, what else do I got here? Navigation, um, when you turn your steering wheel. Um, currently that sensor's shot, so don't worry about that one. Um, these light up orange with how close you are. So if you're kind of close, the furthest one would be orange. If you're really close, that the closest thing would be orange. So this kind of helps you not rear end into anybody reversing. Uh, what else we got? I think this thing just pops open. This thing needs to be close, kind of looks nice. You got mode. This has uh, mode. You got comfort, normal, race, individual. Um, on the individual, I usually just set everything. You got three options, comfort, normal, sport. So you can customize steering, DCC, um, engine. Engine, if you make it sport, what it does, it shifts at a higher RPM range. Front lighting, I don't know what that is, but I think that's with the headlights, where, how tilted they are. Um, steering, putting it to sport mode, for firmings it up a little bit. And I usually keep it on, I mean, if I'm driving normally, normal. Cause race mode, it just shifts way too high. Yeah, yeah. Well, not that high pitch noise, but not too. And then I got crash control. Boom, if you hit, if you go to D mode. It's cause the doors are open, okay. Well, if you go to D mode and you click once down, that puts into sport mode. You turn traction control off, and that activates the launch control. So you just hold the brake with your left foot, um, and just holds it around. I got the DSG tune, so it also holds it around 34, 3500 RPM. Um, that thing just takes off from launch, so it's definitely an advantage in racing for, you know, big bucks. And so currently I have 34,397 miles. I bought it at 32 something something. The drive back was about 1,700 miles. And so far, no. Yeah, I also got this pretty cool feature. It's called Auto Hold. If I'm at a stoplight, I can let go of the brake and the car just brakes by itself. It's a pretty neat feature when I'm driving. Um, so, this thing ships super quick. I mean, and it pulls pretty quick too. I'm probably gonna do a launch, but it just. I mean, everybody got freaked out in the back <laughs> from doing that. They're, uh, they got a little scared. They didn't say anything. But <laughs> Are you I scared? Saw, I saw it off the I wasn't scared. scared. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, gas mileage, the way I drive, horrible gas mileage. I usually get like 20 miles a gallon. Less, I get like 18 miles a gallon. There we go, 20. I mean, trunk space, I mean, it's not bad. It's pretty high, which is nice, and the seat's full. You can probably fit like a snowboard in here. You can probably fit ski racks. Probably not straight, but like horizontally. You can easily fit four tires. What else would fit in here? You can probably fit a person in here, probably two. Okay. If you're uh, camping, you know, with your loved one. Yeah, it's uh, space-wise, the back's not bad. It's a pretty compact car. All right, so when I pop this baby open. So what do we got here? We got, obviously, the engine. Obviously, yeah, it's okay. The turbo's in the back right there. It's not a good shot of that, I don't know, but it's about, you know, it's a bit that size. And you said there was plans on uh, upgrading the intake to get a little bit more power? I want to get, yeah, this thing just looks not that great. I want to get a big open intake. Um, maybe a downpipe in the future to go stage two. Okay. Three to downpipe. Yeah, but nothing too crazy on the inside here. Did you put on the dyno yet? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't know. If I did, at sea level, I'm probably around 315 mil horsepower. At, not, not at sea level, I mean at elevation. Mm -hmm. At elevation. At sea level, it probably would have been 350 wheel. Yeah, so I lose quite a bit. Yeah. But I still take them 
Subarus, you know, STIs. So one of the things that we're curious about is to see how the A4 B9 competes against the Golf R. So we're going to take these two cars out on the street and let them do the talking. All right guys, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, and let us know what kind of modifications we should do on this Golf R 2015. Like for more power, thumbs down for, no, don't thumbs down. <laughs>